words. Okay, now we move to pronouns, distribution of pronouns. Remember what we said about the pronouns? We said the may refer to, okay, and in P in the sentence. For example, Omar said that he, so he may refer to Omar, okay, or may refer to somebody else in the external world. Can, can anyone, can anyone think of what we are going to talk about? Can anyone think of coindexation uh, and related to the two cases when the pronoun refers to the inpi? For example, Omar said that he, he refers to Omar and when he refers to somebody in the external world. Can you explain this using coindexation, etc.? So, okay, so we already said that if he refers to Omar, which means the pronoun and the antecedent are coindexed. Okay, and if it refers to somebody in the external world, they shouldn't be coindexed. Now, let's talk about these two cases. So pronouns are also restricted in every uh, in in where they may appear. Consider the grammaticality of the following sentences. Okay, so Heidi bobbed her. Heidi bobbed her. Can anyone explain why sentence B is ungrammatical? Because, uh, because mm -hmm. her that not refer to Heidi in the second example. Mm -hmm. But and, we and already example. said. But we already said that the so here here a is correct. Her her is a pronoun. It does not refer to Heidi. It refers to somebody in the external world. And in B. Her refers to Heidi, and it's incorrect. Fine. Now we understand why uh, why it is incorrect, because her refers to Heidi. But we said that the pronoun may refer to an in B, for example, in B here, or may not. But now we are saying it's incorrect, so it's contradiction. Okay? Now, uh, let's consider the other examples. Now, look here. A, Heidi said that she discovered with art. Heidi said that she discovered with art. Now, what is the difference between A and B? Uh, these two sentences. Heidi said that she discovered with art. What is the difference? Professor? First. Okay. okay. Yes, Miss Naima. Go ahead. Because um, the, the the second example, we have two two classes, and the first one we have just one class. So the the antecedents and the pronoun must be in the same class. Must must not be in the same class. Um, okay. Yes. You you jump to the conclusion. Thank you. We'll explain this more. Okay, yes, so here Heidi said that she discovered with art. Let's explain the difference between A and B here. Here, the, the antecedent and the pronoun belong to two different clauses. Fine. But it's correct. So when the pronoun and the antecedent belong to different clauses. We are talking about pronouns. When they belong to different clauses, they may be coindexed, which means they may be bound. They may be bound, which means coindexed and secumended. They may be bound as in A, or they may not be bound as in B. And both of them are correct. Both of them are correct. Okay? If the, the, the pronoun and the antecedent are bound, as in A. Please remember, bound is secumended and coindexed. So if the pronoun and its antecedent are bound, as in A, 
the sentence is correct. And if they are not bound as in B, the sentence is also correct. But look at the, the first two sentences. But look at A and the B. But if the pronoun and its antecedent are bound in the same clause, it's incorrect. In the same clause, it's incorrect. Look at A. In the same clause, they are not bound. They don't have the same index. They don't have the same index, so it's correct. They are not bound. In B, in B, they have the same index. They, okay, they are bound. It's incorrect. So this is exactly the opposite case of the anaphors. Okay. In the anaphors, we said if they belong to different clauses, the sentence is incorrect. But in the pronouns, we said if they belong to different clauses, they may or not, may not be bound. But if they belong to the same clause, they mustn't be bound. But the anaphors, if they belong to the same clause, they must be bound. The pronoun, if they belong to the same clause with the antecedent, they mustn't be bound. You see? Is it clear? Yes, sir. So yes, I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to say it again. So the importance of the, the first two examples is to help you understand that if the pronoun and the antecedent belong to the same clause, they mustn't be bound. So this is in B. In B, the pronoun and the antecedent belong to the same clause. That's why the sentence is ungrammatical. So they must be as in A. They mustn't be bound. So this is the importance of the, the first two examples. If the pronoun and the antecedent belong to the same clause or the same binding domain, they mustn't be bound. Now we move to the two last examples. If they belong to two different clauses, they may be bound as in A, or they may not be bound as in B. There is no problem. They may be bound or may not be bound. It's not a problem. Is it clear now? Yes, yes professor. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is principle B. Principle B. A pronoun must be free in its binding domain. Must be free. Free in the binding domain. Which means here it is free. It may be bound or may not be bound. Okay? Or you may add if you want. You may improve this principle. You may say, and if the pronoun and the antecedent belong to the same binding domain, then it mustn't be bound. Okay? If the pronoun and its antecedent are in the same clause, they mustn't be bound. Is it clear now? Any question? So please remember the pronoun. If the pronoun and antecedent, if they belong to different clauses, they may or may not, okay, be bound. If they are bound, no problem. If they are not bound, it's accepted. But if they belong to the same clause, the pronoun and its antecedent mustn't be bound, okay? <clears throat> 